Welcome to another video from Dr. Lock. I want to do um, a quick review on these two digital door locks. This one here has been out for a few years and it's not been without problems. We've had a few that have had a few problems. We've had some that have just been working. They go out there, they work, they work fine. They're more for uh, domestic or light use areas. We found that if you try and put them in a high use area, they're just going to um, not really live up to the stress. They are an electronic lock and they do they do work but they're not the sort of thing you'd want to throw a brick at or leave outside or or kind of um, abuse. Uh, on saying that we've used these for a number of years and they have been pretty good but lately we decided to discontinue and not um, sell them anymore because we've had problems with them. Uh, take the other day for example I went to install two of these and I took two off the shelf and both of them were faulty. So that would be the primary reason. Um, that's not been the first time. That was the first time it was two in a row but um, certain times we have pulled them out of the box and they've been faulty. I just want to do a quick review on comparing them because we're moving over now to a new product and I must say the new product is pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it uh, to replace one to the other. There is a small difference in price, you know, $50 or so uh, from a wholesale point of view, but on saying that I think it's worth paying a little bit more. It seems like a lot of the bugs that have been in this one seem to have been rectified here. The quality of the build is better and I'll take you and show you. I've only basically, they've been out for a while, but I've uh, only really fitted one today and I'll give you the quick run sheet on how to program it as well. So I'll leave that in the description so you can skip to that section if you just want to quickly know how to do that. Um, there is a couple of little differences, but there's a lot of similar on both of them so that was one of the reasons why we went with this uh, many a times you know they're, they're good for certain places um, you can put it on a townhouse front door you could put this one on a, a shop storage room many places like that where <clears throat> you've got people and it's easier to use codes rather than um, keys this one is a three in one so <clears throat> it has uh, quite a lot more functions and when you compare them there'd be no need to even look at this product anymore. This, this seems to be the one to go. So I'll take you through, I'll give you some specs on them and I'll give you a quick look over both of them. Now this one here, it did have some advantages. Well, the price was a little bit cheaper for one. So I'll just put that over there. Price was a little bit cheaper for one. The actual fitting of it uh, is quite easy. It's a tie bolt setup and um, you take it out. It's, it's also both handed. You can hand it left, you can hand it right, left and small button on the inside. Where's my little screwdriver? Oh, here's a pick. Push the button down and you can hand it the other way. Uh, tie bolt set up so it just goes basically straight on the latch as so, straight through there and away you go. Um, one of the issues we had with this is uh, not engaging, uh, beeping funny, uh, just a few unreliable issues. So that's why we decided not to install them anymore or sell them. One of the good things I did like about it, you walk up and you just push the button, the, the buttons light up and you just start entering in your code. Code, bang, makes a little noise and away you go. The next good thing about it was it had a key override which can be converted to restricted keying and that is important. Everybody likes to know, um, you know, can I use it for my restricted? You can. As far as installing and programming this, it was a very simple straightforward procedure. There's a little cheat sheet on the back of the battery cover here and basically you enter in your master code, uh, well you can, let's say for example you want to change your master code, you enter in your master code, um, 10 hash new must code hash and away you go to get into programming mode you simply needed to turn the button on the inside which is this one here which also activates the vestibule function so if you turn this knob here uh, you'd be able to start programming or you can actually use both handles on both sides of the door and the lock would remain unlocked so that was what that button was for uh, this shell here too seemed to um, peel up it didn't sit very well on the back of the door here there's no screw the only two screws are here and here so there's nothing really holding it down on this section here so I did notice there's always a one mil gap or a two mil gap at the top end of that section there so that wasn't very good um, as far as programming going back to that one right there um, yeah the program was fairly straightforward no big issues and you do get a cheat sheet so once you've done it once or twice you're pretty much right to default this product here you had to hold down the hash remove a battery and that was how you defaulted it back to its original on the inside here it says only use alkaline batteries when I spoke to the <clears throat> the supplier today they say no only use uh, their batteries these Procell ones these ones here Procell so we'll be installing them always with the Procell batteries as recommended but it's uh, on the back of the cover here it says use alkaline so who knows there must be some reason for that this one again there is a button on the inside you flick that you can do your handing there so that's enough talking about the old one because uh, we're done with them had a few issues been there done that so I'm just going to throw that aside. Now let's look at the new one and compare it and look at some of the additional features. Now remember, um, I only just did 
you know, sort of uh, get this. They've been out there for a while, but I haven't um, installed that many of them. Um, I've only read partially some of the instructions, and from that, it's enough to um, to get me going. So I was pretty happy in that regard, and I was pretty happy with the similar features that it had to the other lock as well. So in the box, same size box, the product is very similar. Um, you can select with or without batteries, but I'd say buy it with the batteries. They recommend it. The batteries give out a certain amount of power uh, constantly, so I guess other batteries might die down where instead of giving 1.5 volts per AA battery, maybe they go down to 1.2 and things, and perhaps these digital locks are very, very touchy. So with this, uh, you get your screw pack here. Uh, not much really to report in there. Two long screws to hold the actual uh, lock and the plate on. Another couple of screws to hold the plate to that section, uh, one of the tools to remove the knob, a couple for the latch, a couple for the strike, and a little sticker to cover up one of the holes. One of the differences here I did notice is this latch right here, it's got a gold color in it. There seems to be um, no big difference apart from that. It's a 60, 70 mil latch, so you can do 60 and 70, just the same as the other one. Comes with your keys there, six pin keys, looks like a PD cylinder, so it looks like you can um, put restrict in it, so that shouldn't be too big an issue. So here's the lock here, it comes with a couple of gaskets as well. One of the things I do like is it's a quite a large footprint, so it is going to help you cover up other footprints. We were uh, swapping from one of these cheap type locks here, and uh, it did actually take over the footprint, as you can see. The only section was down the bottom, but this is an unusual lock because it's got like the bottom section there. So replacing it from that to something else, uh, we went with this particular one here. When I look over the actual product, um, I'm happier than I am with the previous one. That's why we won't be selling the other ones now. As far as, uh, you know, faults, well, we're, we're only sort of on our first batch and when I look over the actual product and things, it looks to be built a lot better. So it's got a lot more function, seems to be built a lot better, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, on the actual inside, once again, you've got a little button down there for your handy. So we go left, push the button, push the button, and then we can spin it right. So that's easy handing, that's really cool. From the front, um, the finish is really nice, and um, the cylinder is there. I'll just quickly pop that cylinder out too, because We'll, we do want to confirm whether or not we can put a restricted key system in there because for a lot of locksmiths that's, that's an important one. So I might just have to do this off camera. Push and pull. There we, there we go. Okay, so it is a standard PD cylinder. So confirmed, you can put your restricted keying in this. So just pop it back on. There we go, it's back. All right, um, so that's the face of it. Um, I'll give you some sizes too. One of the other things uh, I was keen about this particular lock when I was comparing it to, I was thinking about going with a Borg lock or another type of digital lock. The customer definitely want a digital, but the problem is with the Borg locks is you can't, well, you can get them, but lever and key override was very hard to get, uh, as were these ones come with this key override. So with uh, certain customers, you have to really make it fail safe, and by having it, that key override really does. Uh, without that, you know, you can be in all sorts of situations because customers often don't replace the batteries. Okay, size of that lever. Uh, you're looking about 120. Uh, one of the things that I liked about this lock as well was that it would sit on the door without protruding too far and also it was a lever. So I'm looking at it here, I'd be guessing to be accurate 72 mil. If you put the gasket on, they might be up to 75 mil, but it seemed to fit in a door jam quite nicely. They had a screen door on the front of the couple that I fitted today, and the screen, uh, screen door lock was a little bit higher. But had that screen door lock been in the same position as this, which would have been quite low, it might have actually hit. So just measure that. Uh, rest of the lock body, uh, 72, 150 I would say, nicely rounded edges. Okay, so to fit this to the door, we'll do that in a moment. Here's the inside here. There is a little grub screw there. I don't like that. I mean, that grub screw is going to get lost. Could you use it without the grub screw? It's a real tight fit, this plastic cover. I would say easily. You could just leave that grub screw off. Compared to the other model, that was a clip-on. This is a real tight slide. They've included the cheat sheet on the back there. One of the things I noticed with this is that with the other one, 
the default pin number was one two three four five six with this one it's one two three four five six seven eight and that caught me out because uh, i was expecting it to be the same also with this one once you put in your new pin number and push hash you have to then do a confirmation pin number and hash and i'll give you the quick programming for it now so this will be enough to sort of get you going so the default pin number is one two three four five six seven eight so to start off with, you need to hold this button down until it beeps at you. Then you enter in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, hash. To change the master position, you enter in 10, 1, 0, and then uh, hash. And then you enter in your new master pin number. On the other one, it needed to be six, six digits. I'm not sure if it's changed or not, but let's say six digits for this example. Then you push hash, enter in your new master pin code again, and push hash. You should get some sort of audible uh, verification code, and you can test it. If you want to change the user code, it's uh, instead of doing um, Instead of doing 10, you do 20. And if you want to do other positions, you can do that, you know, 22, 23, 24, all those sorts of things. Uh, there's the batteries as well. Uh, now let's go over a few specs of this particular device and then I'll put some power to it. All right, uh, suits so a standard 54 mil hole in a door, which is standard if you don't know what it is. So there's a standard 54 mil hole. That's just your standard setup for an offset. I'll put it on um, the stand in a minute. RFID tag, so they call this a 3-in-1 because you have key, uh, combination and you also have RFID tags. Uh, going down you can have 25 users and RFID tags, so I'm not sure if that's like 50, 25 users and 25 R RFID tags making 50, um, but it could just be 25 positions or it could be 50 positions, it's not clear here on the instructions. Uh, code four digits to eight digits that's cool for the user codes it's not specific about the master code on uh, the settings that i'm reading here when you actually start it up and to start it up you just put your hand over it it'll give you a couple of numbers to press just random numbers and you push them in and then you would put in your uh, actual code now one of the reasons that's good and i think it's called a challenge a lot of locks are doing that these days is because at least then you're not doing the same pattern on your door and it's not like if you've got greasy hands you're not going to be leaving these big smudges on particular spots so by having that challenge is good for a, a few reasons a bit of extra security has an auto lockout feature so if you start messing around with it putting the wrong code it's going to start to lock you out for periods of time that's fairly straightforward uh suit store thickness from 35 to 51 mil which is pretty cool uh, leave, it has an adjustable latch, we talked about that. It also says here, due to the nature of this lock mechanism, 127 mil latch is not available. I have a carbine latch and I have a Brava latch. I'm pretty sure one of them's going to work, but I'd like to see why it doesn't. One, uh, one locksmith I was speaking to a while back, a very smart locksmith, he says, before we sell any digital lock, we take it out there and we, we see if we can break it. You know, before we put on a customer's door, we see if we can break it. I thought, you know, that's a brilliant idea. If only, you know, I have the time and uh, we have the, you know, resources to sit down and see if we can, you know, break a, break all the digital locks or digital stuff we come across, you know, to really save us a lot of time in, in the long run. And... Um, I've had problems with digital code locks before. I mean, uh, you might see my Cortex video where I had problems with them. Um, so digital locks, problems, it can happen. You know, you can get bugs, you can get issues with them. So they're not foolproof just yet. Like you would say, if it was a mechanical lock, you'd be, you know, 99% sure you're, you're going to get 99.5% sure whatever you get out of the box, you know, it's going to work. As with digital, you can have all sorts of issues. Uh, one of the issues I was speaking to uh, the salesperson today was people, when they install it, they can pinch the cable. You can use the wrong batteries, corrosion, uh, people vandalizing the lever, things like this where it might not be apparent to you, but you can actually have issues uh, that can stop it from working in that, in that regard. They are more susceptible to things like that. There is a mortise lock version of this as well uh, for certain types of doors. Not all mortise locks are... Uh, four AA batteries. Uh, it says he recommended to use Duracell Pro Cell. So I guess... Yeah, these are Duracell. Okay, so the Duracell Pro Cell. Just keep replacing it with those ones. The life you can expect to use about the, out of this particular product here, they've put down 5,000 openings. Let's say you open your door five times a day, probably looking about three years. One of the things when I was looking for a, a replacement lock for the other one, because um, I thought, oh, I'm not going to go with the same brand and all the rest, but um, one of the things I did notice was that um, some locks like this one here have a little thing on the front where you can connect. I saw one the other day that had a micro USB, and not to be picky, but it would be nice if it had a, a little way to charge it from the front, and micro USB everybody seems to have these days, so that would that would have been nice, but um, f considering all the features it does have, I think that's just being a bit greedy. And you also do have key override, and it's a standard key. You can get keys cut, as where these other ones here, 
this type of thing. You'd never get keys cut in Australia for that. You probably could, but it'd be, it'd be a real battle. Okay, um, fire tested to one hour. And does that comply for unit front doors? Uh, I, I, to be honest with you, I don't know. It says fire tested to one hour, but I thought it was an hour 20. Uh, but yeah, RFID tags sold separately, blah, blah, blah. And if you've got NFC, you should be able to use your mobile phone. I've got a Samsung. I had a look at that and I thought, you know what? I'm going to put it on, do it on camera and see if I can actually get that to activate. So here's our latches here. I can't see why this would not work. I can't see why 127 would not work. They said it doesn't work for some reason. So let's find out why. Okay, so let's quickly um, just fit it up to, let's just fit it up to the board. And let's just uh, do a few little programming things just to run through, give you a bit of an idea. We weren't going to take on um, any, any more of these digital locks from this manufacturer because we had uh, troubles with the other one. But after looking at it, I was fairly happy with the finish and fairly happy with uh, the actual quality of it. It seems to be more rugged. The other one is more of a tin. I'll show you here. Especially on the inside, like the cover, things like that. It's, it's basically a plastic with a pressed shell, a very thin little shell going round. And even the cover on this side here doesn't seem as much quality. Uh, with the actual mechanism, the one that engages on the front side, that's where most of the problems were with the with it. Anyway, <clears throat> moving on. So to fit this to a door, let's do that. Let's do that. Okay. So here we have our door. Now this latch here is different in colour. I don't know why, um, but shouldn't be any sort of issue. A little bit tight there to fit in. Okay. Now that's 60 mil, slide it over to 70 mil, slide it back to 60, 60 and 70. So from the outside here, we would put uh, this on here and we would reverse our handing, push that, turn that, cable very carefully push through, no big deal. I'm not gonna bother with the screws in, this is just a quick demonstration. Okay, sits on there nicely. So far, so far so good. Okay, a little plate on the inside, a little cutout. Cable goes through. We have to protect this cable as much as we can. So there are two lunks here. It's like a female and a male, female and a male. So I'm just going to push them through like so. There we go. Okay, now in our screw pack here, You can see there I'll just lay out all the screws about there so we've got two long screws they are to connect this plate to the outside lock body which I'm just going to quickly do now there's my screwdriver picking up the thread yes I've got the thread where's my lazy screwdriver here it is here One and two. Okay, here's our handle for the inside here. There's a good look at it. So it connects right here. There's two little lines here and an open space here. So that's very straightforward to connect. If you can see what I'm doing, hopefully you can. Just pushing it in, making sure it's in there snug. Red down the bottom, blue up the top. Now this cable has to not get basically churned up by that so we're going to be putting that in pushing it back a bit and just putting it out of the way make sure this cable is out of the way I'll take those screws off flipping it over and I'm just going to loop it around as you can see so it's going to go around that hub making sure it's not going to get pinched snagged or anything and putting it together from there we have two small screws one here Make sure we just pick up that plate. Yep, we're on that plate. And one more here. So the battery cover will cover this top screw hole, but there's nothing for this bottom one, so they do include a little sticker. A little sticker, stick on right there, if needed. Okay, so that is the lock somewhat fitted to the door. Batteries go in. Okay. 
Okay, so the little nipple goes to the flat side and the one without the nipple goes to the spring. I'm sure everybody's done that before. Okay, here's our cover. And it just slides over. So now the lock should be ready to use. So to wake it up, give it a press, give it, and now it gives you the challenge. And now I can enter in my master code, which is the default one. And it's working. Okay, let's move on to programming. Okay, so the lock does come with some instructions, some warranty, different languages. It comes with this big one here. It might look a bit confusing. I'm going to break the programming down for you, hopefully, so that way um, it'll be nice and easy. So we'll just put them out of the way. So to start with, the, the lock is actually set to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's the default code. To default the lock, if everything goes wrong, you uh, hold down the set button, remove a battery, count to 5 or 6 or 7, replace the battery, keep holding. It's going to scream at you. Release the button, and you'll see it do this thing right here. Okay, now we're back to default. Okay, so if you've just installed this on the door and you want to program it up, first thing you want to do is change the master code from the master code to a new code. So you've got a master code, user code, and we'll do a swipe card, then we'll try the NFC thing. So the master code will actually work to activate the lock. So first of all, we wake it up, do the challenge, try the master code, and it will still work the lock. This is why we want to change it. If you want the lock to go into passage mode where you can use the handles, just hold down that little um, hash button, turn it off, wake the keypad up, hold the hash button down, it's back to lock mode. Okay, so we're done default, passage mode, uh, master code. Okay, so for all of these instructions, it's all pretty much the same. The only thing that changes is the location. So to start off with, we're going to do the setting the master code. Hold this down, it'll beep. Back over we go. We're going to enter in our default master code, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, hash. Now we're going to go to position 10, 1, 0, hash. Now we're going to put in our new master code. Um, I'm not sure if, uh, oh yeah, we can do a four digit one on this one. So let's try a four digit code, 2, 5, 8, 0, hash. Beep, beep, a little green beep uh, light came up here. Now we confirm it again, 2, 5, 8, 0, oh, hash. And we should be good to go. So let's test it any order to okay so our master code has been changed this master code we're going to be using to program in other features now the next feature we're going to do is a user code so we're going to go back over to the back here we're going to push this button till it talks to us look back over and we're going to enter in our master code which is 2580 now hash now the position for uh, user code is 20 so we're going to go 20 hash now we can enter in our user code user code between four and eight digits again so let's try 0852 hash 0852 hash so it changes from the old carbine one to this one you got to enter it in a little bit more so that's no big deal and uh, once you finish it should just actually time out we've entered it in twice okay wake it up any combination for the challenge and it's working so now we've done a user code and a master code the only thing that was different is the position uh, that we have to do it now we're going to be adding a swipe card now it doesn't come with swipe cards swipe cards um, can be purchased as well i pick these ones up off ebay they're, they're pretty cheap um, i have tried in a few of them but these ones seem to work i'm not too sure in the actual format i'll probably be saying 125 or something along those lines so here we go hold this down it's talking to us uh, master code 2580 hash and now to, to do swipe a card we do position 23 two, three, hash now we present our tag twice once twice and we wait for it to time out maybe we try the hash button nope no need a hash button so we'll just wait for that to time out in a second now when I present this tag it should actually unlock it and it does okay so that's entering in a, a tag now the most important feature a lot of people wanted to know was what about the NFC the near field um, actually sorry I have a tag in my wallet as well uh, it comes from a H it's a copy of a HID system let's see if I can put that one in so master code 2580 hash was that a good one let's keep going 23 hash for another swipe card and present the tag I think, I think uh, that one uh, 
messed up there we'll have to try that one again i'll just wait for it to time out okay pushing the button on the back okay we're in master code 2580 hash uh, position 23 hash presents white card twice once twice wait for it to time out now the one i'm using in my wallet's a very fine little sticker round little sticker uh, just on the back of a credit card there and it's from a it's for a hid um system uh, it was a clone and um, yeah, i'm gonna see if i can add it this is where sometimes if you've got cards for your business or your work and you don't want to carry around multiple cards you can en enroll the same cards ah, and it worked so that's cool so that's one less card I need to carry around. I can just use the card that I'm using somewhere else. Okay, now, the phone. Where's the phone? Let's put this back in programming mode again. Now, I read the instructions. It didn't mention anything about the near-field um, NFC. So I'm assuming it's going to go pro be programmed in just like swipe card. So let's try our luck. And then position 23 for swipe card. Hash. Okay, present uh, the swipe card. I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to present my mobile phone. I use a Samsung Active S7 beeped once beeped well three times wait for it to time out we'll see if that works uh certain phones are compatible certain phones aren't um to be quite honest with you i'm not too sure which ones are which but if you've got a more modern phone or a high-end phone uh chances are you've got a bit of a chance so let's try presenting it now no didn't work okay so something wrong with the format there maybe it's compatible maybe it's not maybe it's my phone maybe uh we didn't get the right menu for it as well okay so going through the menus now i'll read them all out to you real quick <coughs> position 10 is uh master code position 20 is user code position 23 is swipe code uh position 30 is what's 30 uh delete individual user code uh position 33 delete individual card uh, position 40 is delete all cards, all, sorry, all codes at once. So that would be um, master code, hash, 40, hash, and then the number C. So to delete all users and cards at once, you would go master code, hash, position 41, hash, and C, and that will clear everything. So to put it, um, to put it, it, it's not very different to the other ones, quite easy to program. Um, I didn't read the instructions in completely in depth to get as far as I did. But um, now there's one more thing we want to try with it. And to do that, we're going to need to take it off the board. We're going to try and see what happens when you do a 127 mil latch. It says, you, it says you can't do it. I'd love to know why. So let's just quickly try that and that will, that will conclude this video. I think we've pretty much covered all of it. Um, all in all, I'm pretty happy with the product. Looking over it, I'm happy to install it on my customers and put it in place of some of the other other digital locks. And um, I'm much more happier than the previous version. I thought I think it's a, a much better design, much more features. So yeah, a little bit more pricey, but considering you're getting more, and it's uh, better. I think it's worth the money. The access tag is a, is a big seller as well. A lot of people uh, like like the more fancier things. All right, so I don't have the 127 mil board on me, but what I do have is a 127 mil latch. So let's just try this, plug this in, and see if we can get in any type of action just in my hand, just to get a rough idea of why they say you can't do it. I mean, it's just a 127 mil latch. It's the same as a 60. Just put that together like that. Make sure we're not pinching the cable. Battery's back in. Also, uh, it should have a non-volatile memory. I didn't notice that there, but if the batteries are removed, we should still have our card access here. So let's try it. Hang on, all the batteries in the right way. Nope. My bad. Okay, there it is. Let's try our codes challenge master okay so that might be the problem not pulling the latch back far enough see that some doors you might get away with it if you've got a big gap but yeah not pulling the latch back so that's uh that seems to be what the problem is 60 and 70 mil compatible 127 not so compatible Oh, carbine latch seems to do a little bit better than the Brava. So that's good. 
but not all the way. But I would say you'd probably get away with uh, using a 127. There's probably some reason. Someone would know what the reason is you cannot use a 127 mm latch. I'd love to know. Put it in the comments. Um, all right, so that's the best uh, rundown I can give you on this particular lock. Comparing it to the other one, much better. Um, finish, much better. Usability, much better. Uh, as far as faults and things like that, well, I'd have to, you know, do a couple of hundred of them before I'm going to find any fault. And that's if there are any faults. Most likely all the other faults from um, the previous model, especially with this cog and mechanism inside this unit here where it engages the spindle. I would say that a lot of that's been fixed up with their research and all the rest. Um, yeah, as far as the price difference, well, I think it's worth the money. Um, I w if you were to compare the two, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't put the other one on my front door. I'd be reasonably happy to put this on my front door. I can't see any real reason why not. The card access is a big... Um, big game changer a lot of people are going to like that and if you're lucky enough to get your phone to work it as well that's a big bonus as well using pin number um, the little challenge it makes it a little bit longer it doesn't have the furry buttons like the other one uh, but you know this is what I think a lot of digital locks are going to now where you got to wake it up a lot of Lockwood ones are very similar like that these older style button ones now I think you're going to say that they're pretty much first generation they're on their way out um, as far as override and safety, well the key system on it's pretty good, any locksmith can open this, so that's that's good. You can get it re-keyed without too much trouble, you're not needing to strip things down, you just pull the knob from the front. So yeah, as far as, uh, so yeah, as, far as the product, I'm pretty happy with it, and um, we're not going to be selling the other ones, we're going to be selling these ones and installing these ones. Now I've had a good look over and reprogrammed re it and all that sort of stuff. From what I've seen, it looks, um, looks good. If you'd like to purchase this, you can do so on our website, just go to drlock.com.au, go to the store, you can find it under digital code locks it might not be there today or tomorrow but it'll be there by the end of the week as far as the batteries as they say use the right batteries and um, as far as fitting you should be using your standard 54 mil hole and it goes in 60 70 mil back set so you can pretty much put in it in most standard houses anyway that's my review if you know more about this lock or you know something that i've said wrong or if you know something that i haven't said please leave it in the uh, comments down below and thanks for watching